PlumbingWorld.com sells plumbing supplies, and on its website you can find this article. Sitting-type toilets in human history appeared quite early in the remains of Harappa civilization in India at a place called Lothal, and in the year 2500 B.C. The people had waterborne toilets in each house, and he goes on to say that each one of these toilets was linked to an underground sanitation system that took away the waste. But with the decline of the Indus Valley civilization, the science of sanitary engineering disappeared from India. From then on, the toilets in India remained primitive and open defecation became rampant. That paper was written by a PhD and was presented at an international symposium on public toilets held in Hong Kong. Elsewhere on the web, you can read the ancient Indus systems of sewage and drainage that were developed and used in cities throughout the Indus region were far more advanced than any found in contemporary urban sites in the Middle East and even more efficient than those found in some areas of Pakistan and India today. So again we see the pattern of relatively high technology at an early age followed by a decline worldwide. Human artifacts older than about 4,000 or 5,000 years are scarce, but they do exist. Among the most fascinating are the paintings found in hundreds of caves in Europe, especially the nearly 2,000 cave paintings near Lascaux, France. Radioactive carbon dating shows these to be 15,000 years old or older. I found it especially fascinating that their Wikipedia page noted that the crossed bison painting is often held as an example of the skill of the Paleolithic cave painters. The crossed hind legs show the ability to use perspective in a manner that wasn't seen again until the 15th century. According to Gregory Curtis, an art journalist, this ability to use perspective was not reborn until the arrival of Paolo Uccello. Notice that the figures in the background of this Uccello drawing clearly are smaller than the figures in the foreground giving the painting an admirable sense of depth. In contrast, Dark Age art often looked flat, two-dimensional. Even when perspective was starting to be used again just before the Renaissance, it was confused, as shown in this picture from about 1250 A.D. Notice that the lines of the temple, and yes, that toll booth-like structure is supposed to be a temple, those temple lines, when extended, don't even come close to meeting at a vanishing point. The upper two lines shown in the drawing converge at point number one, while the third line converges with the first line at point number two. Perhaps worse yet, the bottom two lines appear to be parallel. Moreover, the figure in the right foreground is too small compared to the crowd behind him, and those in the rear of the crowd appear to be as large as those in front. On the left, we have figures that appear to be in front of the temple, closer to the viewer than the crowd on the right, but nevertheless, they are much smaller than the figures in the crowd, making them look like midgets. And, no offense to people of small stature, but who would want to hire such tiny people as those shown on the roof to be stonemasons? Clearly, the painter does a credible job of dealing with concrete objects. The physical bodies of the people are realistic but his ability to think abstractly is inadequate to the task of ordering the objects in a way that conveys perspective. Notice the improved perspective of the picture from more than two centuries later. Clearly, all the lines converge at a single vanishing point. Indeed, this painter seems to be shouting to us, I get the point, vanishing point, that is. People from the Far East usually score higher on IQ tests than others. So did Asian artists do better during the Dark Ages? Well, what do you think? Does that table look right to you in this 10th century painting? Me neither. The problem is the front lines and the rear lines are exactly the same length on the canvas. 
I'll show you. I'm merely moving the line across from left to right. I'm not rotating the moving line. Do you see? The lines are parallel. In order to make the table look rectangular, the lines should not be parallel. If extended, they should meet at a vanishing point. Same problem two centuries later in this 12th century painting, known as the planter. And for the same reason, the lines on the sides are parallel, making the planter look anything but rectangular. But by the 18th century, this Japanese painter got it right. Not only could 18th century artists get it right, they could also get it wrong intentionally. The late Renaissance artists had fun mocking the muddled perspectives of the Dark Ages. Note the fisher in the foreground, seeming to hold the pole out in front of himself, even though he's pulling a fish from a body of water that appears to be far to his right. And what about that huge swan over on the other side of the bridge? Isn't it about as large as the horses on the bridge? This picture shows plenty of other anomalies, but my personal favorite is the lady leaning out of the window to give a light to the smoker on the hillside. In summary, again we see a mental faculty that appears to be evidenced thousands of years ago, according to art critics, but was lost during the decline from the higher ages and then returned again as we emerged from the dark ages. Perhaps even more significant in the Lascaux paintings, a number of the almost 2,000 drawings in the cave show dots in the sky that seem to indicate astronomical phenomena, such as the 29-day synodic month, or as shown in this photo, a pattern of dots over the bull's shoulder that replicate the pattern of the stars in the Pleiades star cluster. Is there any significance in the fact that the animal in the drawing is a bull? Some scholars argue that the painting is a bull merely because bulls were hunted by the cave painters. But the ancient bones of roasted animals that were found in the cave are all reindeer bones. No cattle were found. For this and other reasons, some university researchers argue that the bull was chosen because the Pleiades are part of the Taurus constellation. And as you may know, the word Taurus comes from an Indo-European root that means bull. The implication is that perhaps this constellation already was associated with a bull 15,000 or more years ago. For possible reasons that we'll later discuss in greater detail, the Pleiades also are mentioned in the Bible and in countless other ancient stories, including old legends found here in the Americas. The fact that the Pleiades are so important to so many cultures lends credibility to the notion that the cluster of dots shown over the bull's shoulder, along with other astronomical phenomena shown in the paintings, might indeed be intended to represent the Pleiades and perhaps might have been associated in the painter's mind with the constellation Taurus, 